Hello and welcome to our live DJ Q&A here from the Digital DJ Tip Studio for another Thursday. And this week we're looking at how to make your DJ studio sound great. As ever, we are live. So I'm going to run our opening sequence and then we'll get started. See you in 30 seconds. So hello, how are you doing? How's your Thursday going? It's a topic we get asked about a lot here and we cover this topic of how to make your, your DJ practice room, your studio, wherever it is that you do your DJ, sound as nice as possible in a very simple way. Because if you're in a pro studio, then they spend a lot of time and money doing this. And if you're in a really, really good nightclub, like the best in the world, then again, they have a lot of time and money to spend on getting this right. And it's not the manager or the owner or the DJs or the promoters who set it up. They have specialized people who come in and tune those sound systems. And then they have sound engineers there who make sure that they continue to sound good whoever's DJing on them, right? That's not what this is about. What I wanna to talk to you about today is how to get your good old home DJ speakers sounding as good as possible. Whether you're using what we always recommend beginners use just a gaming system just the two little speakers and a subwoofer tucked under your desk or you're using entry-level monitors like these krk classic fives or you're using slightly more expensive speakers i want to show you how you can get whatever room you're using for your dj practice or your dj producing sounding there or thereabouts and from then on it's up to you if you want to take the 80 percent more time it's going to take to get that 20 percent best best result at the very end i'm going to give you the the 80 percent that's going to take 20 percent of your effort here today right so why why bother why not just plug your speakers in and get on with it well it's a good question there's a few reasons the first reason is that if you have your speakers set up really properly it's going to make beat mixing easier so if you're learning to beat mix if you've got turntables like we've got here in our pro setup side of the studio and you're trying to teach yourself to beat mix or you're trying to teach yourself to beat mix on your jog wheels on your controllers or whatever other gear you're using then manual beat mixing is hard and one of the things you really want to get right is the audio quality because if you can hear everything properly and the speakers are positioned so that there's no delay or a muffled uh, audio or anything, it just takes that one thing out of the equation and gives you the best chance of learning. It takes months to learn to beat mix manually. So having great audio is a great help when you're learning to do that. Another reason is just better mixing. So if you're a DJ producer, you want to start making music, then obviously you need to make sure that it sounds right because otherwise you don't know if what you're hearing is what people are hearing when they listen to your productions. But even if you're just making DJ mixes, when you've got two things playing together, it can get muffled, it can get confusing, and you're not really sure what frequencies are where, what's doing what, and having the speakers set up properly and your room sounding great is a good way of making sure that you are actually doing the best job you possibly can and when you listen back to that that recording it's going to sound good and finally it's just more fun i don't know if you've ever dj'd in a bar or something where they stick you in a corner and there's no speakers that that good that are anywhere near you and you're trying to kind of like rearrange things so you can hear what you're doing properly yeah your headphones sound all right but it's not part it's not the fun if you've ever been in a, in a car and your favorite song comes on Window gets opened, elbow goes out, British, right hand drive. Elbow goes out and you turn it up, right? Of course you do. There's a sweet spot where it sounds absolutely awesome in any car, even cars without the best stereos, right? It's the same with your DJ. You owe it to yourself to set everything up so it just sounds bloody good when you turn it up, right? So you get in that vibe instantly. And if you don't do that, you know, you just, you just, you're just doing yourself out of some fun. So for all these reasons, it's good to try and make your room sound great. So I'm gonna give you five big tips here. The first one is the room itself. This room here is not perfect, but it's pretty good. It's dead. In other words, there's no reverb on what you can hear. And it's not about soundproofing your room so no one else can hear it. You'll never do that. It's gonna cost you, cost you the price of a small house. No, it's about making the audio in the room sound as nice as possible. And without going into too much 
of the depths of this, because I could talk to you for hours about it, you want to stop hard, flat surfaces being hard and flat by breaking them up, and especially corners that have nothing breaking them up. So it's about putting soft furnishing in corners, it's about hanging things on walls, it's about putting rugs on the floor. Basically anything that gets rid of the echo or the reverb in a room is going to make your speakers sound better. So your first job before you do anything else is to do that. Think about how you can break the room up. I mean this room here, I mean you can't see what I can see in the other half of the room is full of stuff basically. It's like working in a cupboard. You have to kind of move your way in like this to get past all the stuff. And by the way, I've been to professional studios, people like Pioneer DJ and so on, where they film their videos. It seems to be anyone who films videos is the same. Whatever room size you've got, you tend to just have about 10% more gear than, than, than is, is comfortable in that room. Trust me, it's just the way it works. And it'll probably be the same for your studio. But if you've got a big new studio and it's echoey and it's got a high ceiling and you've got no furniture in there, this is what you've got to do. Now, the second thing is to get the positioning of your speakers themselves right. So the classic here is to have yourself equidistant from your speakers in a triangle, if you can. Not only that, but I guess this is the third thing, getting you right. So you've got your speakers and yourself. So actually, yeah, let's rewind a bit. The speakers themselves, there are a couple of rules. Don't have them too close to walls. Don't have them too close to corners. Don't have them on the floor, right? But then there's you. So I'm, I'm kind of combining two points here, point two and point three. Uh, point two is get the speakers positioned right. If they're speakers that say do not put near a wall, then pull them back from the wall and all that stuff. So look at the speaker manual itself, but then get the positioning right with you. That's my third point. So you've got your speakers positioned however the manufacturer says. The bigger they are, and if they've got base reflex around the back, which is the hole at the back that the base kind of pumps out of. These ones here, I've got them at the front there. So these are a little bit more forgiving by being close to a wall, but there's lots of things that will affect the speaker positioning and you can experiment with it. And then it's about you. So this is the thing, you want them equidistant, right? So imagine a triangle, the speakers are two of the points of the triangle, you're the third point. And that will give you the sweet spot for stereo. Uh, and then you don't want them too far from you. You want them just, you know, within an arm's length, because these are called short field monitors. That means that they're near field monitors. They're designed to be near you, right? So make sure they are. Uh, and then finally, the right height. You want to have it so that the tweeters are pointing at your head. The tweeters is the directional part of the speaker. This bit isn't directional. The bass doesn't matter. It's the tweeter that matters. It needs to be level with your ears or at the very least pointing at your head and your ears, right? So there's a couple of points there. Now, also my fourth point, speakers. Um, it is a big issue when your speakers are put onto a hard surface and they are turned up because everything will resonate. The hard surface has got a note that you are, are, are encouraging the speaker to play, right? So you don't want that. Uh, so I think having them either on stands with spikes if they're going into a carpet or with firm feet. And then the speaker itself have some kind of foam on the bottom. So these actually come with a foam bottom, but you can get little feet as well that you can just tuck under speakers. That's what I've got on my speakers at home. So we've talked about the room itself, the speaker's position, the position of you in, in relation to the speakers and isolating the speakers. The final thing I wanna talk about when you've done all that is the thing that you don't have to do, but a lot of people like to do this because it just gives them the extra sheen. If you've ever got a Sonos system, anyone here got a Sonos? speakers, they've got something called True Play. You download the Sonos app and you go like this, you look like a right fool, while well, it plays a tune, it goes and you're walking around your room doing this, and then it says your speakers are tuned. And what's it, what it's doing is using the microphone in your phone to listen to your room, spot the resonances, spot the, the things that aren't quite so good, and tell the speaker to do a better job, basically. It's programming a digital signal processor inside those speakers, it's very clever. You can do the same on your speakers. Now, there are ways of doing it that involve software and downloads and stuff like that. The easiest way of doing it is just to buy speakers that come with a microphone that plugs in the back and lets you do the Sonos thing. IK Multimedia actually sell them. I think the IK Multimedia MTM speakers or the Precision speakers. So IK Multimedia, MTM and Precision. I'm pretty sure you can just plug a mic in the back, do it, they're done, which is cool. But we just looked at recently, which I'm going to show you now, a, uh, a system from that same company from, um, from IK Multimedia that lets you tune any speakers. 
It's quite clever. So it's uh, reviewed actually, well it's not, it's just a first look on digital DJ tips. So if you go to the digital DJ tips website, click on this IK Multimedia Arc Studio. It's a little box, and I've done a little video of it there as well if you wanna look into this a bit more. It's a little box that plugs between your speakers and your DJ controller. And so that lets you alter the sound depending upon the reading of your room that you do yourself. It's quite cool, it's like $300. So it's, yeah, it's a decent investment, but it's a good way of getting this because the way that producers do it is they plug in a little plug-in that goes on like Ableton's output. So it all happens in the computer because of course, if you're making music, it's all happening in a computer. When you're DJing, it's not happening in a computer. You just plug the output around the back, right? Uh, you plug it in, oh, my speaker's in the way there. You just plug it in here. Uh, so there's no way of having a computer involved. Well, there is now because this little IK box will plug between these two and your speakers and it'll give you, or these two, and it'll give you um, that correction. It's quite clever. There are actually speakers as well, which you can uh, buy that you can build this into. So we reviewed recently the Adam Audio A4V speakers, which actually you can download to the speaker itself the correction that you've done by, by waving a mic around your room. But you're paying a lot more for these kind of speakers, of course. But that's another way that you can potentially do it. And actually, there was another way uh, that you can do this. That someone on the, um, on the website where we were talking about this IK Multimedia thing pointed out, and it actually looked pretty good. Uh, it was a company called D Speaker, and it was something called Anti-Mode. So I'm gonna look it up now for you and we'll look at it together. Uh, it's this company here, it's a Finnish company, and they do something called anti-mode. This is it. And it's a little box that kind of achieves the same thing in your room, so I'm gonna guess this is quite similar to the IK Multimedia one that we've just taken a look at. I've, I don't know anything else about this yet. I haven't had a chance to look at it, figure out how it works, see what the price is, but it's another one you could consider uh, if you are uh, at the point where you've got your room sounding really good, but you want to take it a step further, this anti-mode box. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll take a little further look at that. If there's something to tell you, I will. So we've talked here about getting your room sounding great. I don't think it's worth spending any money on DSPs or plugins or software or microphones if you haven't done the first four things, which are actually get the room so there's no reverb in it, then position your speakers according to the manufacturer, position yourself in, in, in line with the speakers, make sure the speakers are properly isolated so they're not vibrating whatever they're put on. And then at that point, if you wanna go a bit further, you can look into all this DSP stuff. So that's our little mini tutorial at the beginning today. Uh, I'm gonna spend the rest of the time I've got with you today just chatting to you, not only about this, but about anything you wanna talk about because it is Thursday and as regulars will know, as often as we can on a Thursday, we like to go live and basically just chat DJing, right? So let's do that. Let's chat DJing together for the rest of our time together. I do have to tell you, of course I have to tell you, there's uh, clever stuff going on uh, in our, <laughs> our website at the moment. Uh, not least, we have just put live a 35% off all of our James Hype courses. So James Hype, flavor of the moment of course, has made a mixing course with us, but he's also made a production course where he teaches you to make club bangers. Both of these are 35% off, but only for like the next day or so. Just a quick flash sale to celebrate these courses that we have on our site from James Hype. So do go take a look at Digital DJ Tips uh, if you want to, and you can also switch now to Spanish. Uh, because we now have the whole thing in Spanish as well. How cool is that? So looking after our Spanish, our Hispanic uh, audience there. Right, okay. That's what's happening at Digital DJ Tips. What's happening with you guys and girls? Let's talk DJing. Let's talk room correction and sound quality and all that stuff. Let's talk whatever you want to talk. Hello, regulars. Hello to... Isomatic and Mike and DJ T Jazzy and Mixmaster John Roback. We've got a Mixmaster John Roback now. I like the Mixmaster edition there, John. Hi to DJ Cruz and Herbert and The Ruckus and Ken. Uh, DJ Erivelto Boatade from Portugal, I'm going to guess. Or you could, of course, uh, be in, uh, in uh, Argentina there as well. Argentina, Brazil, Brazil, Argentina. One of them speaks Portuguese. Pretty sure it's Argentina. Forgotten, 50 plus year old head. Uh, anyway, uh, hello to You Don't Like My Music who says, I like Phil's freestyle approach to time. Well, actually I couldn't get this camera to look right. It still looks a bit dodgy to me. Looks a bit dark, looks a bit red. Uh, but this camera went all weird, so I was trying to correct it. 
that's why we're late. Hi Vic in Cape Town. Uh, hello Kesha. Right, let's talk what you want to talk about, your questions, etc, uh, etc. Et this is from Mike who says, Hi Phil, hope you're well. Uh, have you heard about a massive update on Ableton Live 12? Uh, a massive update on, so not the update to Live 12, but a massive update since Live 12 was released. Is that what you're saying? Um, Live 12 is, is out or coming out very soon and it has got some good, some good additions around AI and composition and stuff. Uh, so we will be looking at those in due course, Mike. Is that what you mean? Yeah, we've heard about it. It looks, looks well cool. Uh, so uh, you have to hear the sub bass if you want to know how much to trim it in the mix. So if you don't like my music, yeah, you know, decent speakers so you can hear the bass. True, but then again, a lot of producers will take off the bass up to 50 hertz or wherever it is, uh, because they know that that means that they can hear everything in the room. So knowing how low down your speakers go and hopefully get them to go down really low, and then knowing what you're doing with the bass end of your mix is kind of the way of doing that. Uh, you don't like my music. This is from Lou. Hi, Phil. I hope you and everyone at the team are doing well. We are, thank you. Uh, just for acapellas and for DJing, uh, which RIPEX is good, the regular or the pro? So this is about software that can prepare your acapellas and so on ahead of time rather than doing it in your DJ software. RIPEX is one of the great, um, one of the, the big programs that does it. I think the regular one will be fine for that, uh, Lou. You don't need to go for their uh, all singing, all dancing version. So this is from Cartel. Uh, oh yes, Phil. Um, in my studio, uh, I've got a flood, I've got flood, rugs on the wall. No, hang, hang on. Yes, my studio is from flood rugs. The walls are solid and even the rooftop of the room. So thanks for that. I'm not too sure what, what you're telling us there. Uh, so do you expect to have a subwoofer in the monitor set up in a DJ booth? No. Uh, well, in a DJ booth, maybe. The best DJ booths certainly have subwoofers. I don't think it's necessarily important in your home studio, um, quite often because you can't turn it up without the whole building telling you to turn it down again, frankly. Um, so uh, Stevie says, are you having problems going live? Yes, we are. Thank you. I'm touched that so many of you realise that we're a little bit late. Yeah, it's this bloody camera playing up and I still haven't fixed it. I had to hack it to go live. So I'll be, I'll be, I'll be coming for you, Blackmagic 4K pocket cam, uh, when we go off the air. Um, right. So, uh, so some people need a room for themselves. Some guys don't have that, especially a family guy living in a small apartment, which is another reason why, by the way, my, my studio at home is in the same room as the TV and the kids and the dog and the, uh, the patio doors that go out to the balcony and the kitchen. So yeah, I know all about that. Uh, it's not a good, not a good room that I have to use at home. I have to say it's a lovely room. It's an amazing room. It's a brilliant room. You walk in and go, wow, what a room. But unfortunately, it's not just for me. So that's the thing. So yeah, I totally get it. Uh, all the more reason to, if you've done everything you can do and you're in a shared room, think about speakers with built-in DSPs or think about ways of tuning that audio. It does make a difference. It's what Sonos is onto with their tuning. They know that you're not going to put their speakers in the perfect rooms. That's kind of like a, a selling point there. Uh, you can't, you can do all this stuff manually with the microphone and speakers. You can if you've got the software and the graphic EQ. Yes, you can. Old school. Thank you for that. Um, so Tyler says, the Arc Studio, would that work between speakers and a mixer? It works between any speakers and any mixer. That's the point of it. Um, so it doesn't matter if you're producing, doesn't matter if you're listening to music, doesn't matter if you're trying to get your, your TV to sound right. Anything you can plug into it, it'll correct. Uh, a properly graphed room prevents feedback when a mic is being used. Yeah, we are confusing talking about a studio here. We're talking about a club. But ultimately, it's the same thing. One of them is professional. One of them is just trying to get by at home. Right. Um, right. Now, this is Thursday, which means you get to ask anything you want. I always tell people on our other shows, come back on Thursday. So uh, I'm going to honor that. Billy says, I've got a I've got a, um, an RX controller. Do you think I should get the RX3? Yeah, you'll see a big difference between the RX and the RX3, Billy, for sure. Uh, so when can we get you on Crate Hackers for a chat, says Pete. Uh, well, I'm a busy man, Pete. Uh, never say never, though. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for asking. Uh, this is from uh, Sherwin, who reminds me, yes, it's Brazil that speaks Portuguese. Thank you, Sherwin. I did know that. But you know on TV quiz shows when they say, who is the current president of the United States? And then whoever it is goes, oh, I know, I know this, I know this, but it's gone. That's what happens when I click, click go live. I forget the most obvious things. Um, so uh, yeah, maybe the president of the United States forgets who the president of the United States is on a bad day. Who am I to, uh, who am I to assert anything of the sort? Anyway, um, speakers sounding good is different for everyone. 
Uh, I like pretty, uh, I like a lot of top end. Some people don't. That is absolutely true, home PC. That's absolutely true. But when you're a DJ producer, you need to know what your ears are biasing towards, if you like, because you need to understand how your ears interpret music compared to most people and compared to the average because otherwise all your mixes are going to sound really bright um, uh, when you didn't intend it to be that way because you're just turning it up because that's how you like to hear it in your particular room in your particular set of ears right as we get older our high frequencies tail off so yeah good point different ears sound different uh live 12 is coming out on the 5th of march says tyler thank you for that so um does record box dmx not support laser systems i bought one yesterday and it's acting like it can't control it i'm not the person to ask about that it certainly controls the laser built into our chauvet gig bar that we tested it on all those months ago but i really don't know you'll have to talk to someone over at uh, pioneer dj alpha theta uh, to find out about that meteoric or go on the reddit i love reddit for things like this there'll be someone on their reddit who's got that same light that you've got the same laser that you've got uh, by the way what we're talking about here if you don't know this is a uh, record box has got built-in lighting control now you can buy a box called the record box dmx1 that will let you can plug your lights in and then plug it into the record box they don't even make that anymore but you can also plug it into the back of the flex 10 which has got a lighting socket on it. it's the only one that has at the moment so there we go this is from Charles, who's on YouTube, who says, I've been enjoying lots of the DJs I can't see in person by watching YouTube. I'm having a lot of fun learning how to use my beat effects and sound color effects while I'm listening. So you're copying what they're doing? Or are you putting the audio through your DJ mixer? And I don't know what you're doing there. It sounds like fun though. I'm glad you're having fun, Charles. Thank you for that. I have the Tractor Mark III, says Dwayne. What are the best leads to, do, to buy to do live streams? Well, look, this is uh, it's all going to depend on, on your setup, but it does give me a chance to share something with you, which we always try and do at least once in our uh, live streams because it's a public service announcement, if you like, and it's this. Head to the Digital DJ Tips website and go to that little magnifying glass in the top corner and then type in here what you're looking for help with. So I'm going to type in live streaming. And we will then search our 5,000 articles for you to give you something that might be there to help. So here is some articles on live streaming. I can't actually see the one I want here and that's because the search function is not working how I thought it would, which is annoying. Ah, that's why we call live streaming one word. For some reason a hyphen was put into there. There we go, right, here is the full live streaming uh, feedback from our site. So this is everything we've got on our site about live streaming. And if you str scroll down and click the next box, if you have to, in the end, you're gonna to come to this post here, the ultimate guide to DJ live streaming in 2024. And in this guide, you'll find everything we've got for you on how to get set up live streaming your DJ sets based upon us live streaming our DJ sets. Uh, and we cover everything from phones to audio interfaces to cameras to how to plug your controller in to how to get everything working. So take a look at this. It's full of links uh, and it will show you how to get set up on not only on your tractor controller, but on any controller. Uh, so take a peek. Hopefully that will help you. Uh, right. Let's go back to the comments coming in live then. Uh, I'll grab one now from Stevie who says Sonos will be expensive, but I'm not sure they will be best for DJ. No, 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 they're terrible for DJ. Don't go, don't go and buy Sonos for DJ. They've got a massive delay on them. Uh, they're absolutely useless. Uh, so yeah, you're quite right, Steve. I'm just talking about for home listening. Yeah, no, no, don't. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, I just said, has anyone ever seen those Sonos speakers while they have this thing? Uh, certainly wasn't recommending you do that for home. Uh, getting the right speaker size for your room, says DJ Victor Nova, is uh, the most important thing. The rest is just moving the speakers around for the best results. Well, yeah, we covered all of that. So thanks for reinforcing that, DJ Victor. Uh, and yes, the right size speakers obviously is going to help. You don't want to have speakers that are too small for a big room. I don't think it matters quite so much in the other direction. Otherwise, um, you know, oh, apart from the fact that they're really big and you're in a small room, so they're kind of taking up more room than you want them to. Uh, so this is from Sherwin who says, I use a QSC K8, which is a PA speaker, for my um, DJ monitoring. I can set to flat or bass, and I can set the, 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 the lows, I think you're saying, to flat or bass, and the highs to flat or vocal boost. 
What do you suggest? Right now I have bass for the subs and flat for the highs. Whatever sounds best. I wouldn't put vocal boost on. I think that's probably made for using it with a microphone, but I don't know that particular speaker. But yeah, whatever sounds best for you. You know, it depends upon the positioning in the room, really. Um, so yeah. Um, you don't like my music, says Booyah, Phil goes political. No, I wasn't going political. I was going comedy. Uh, I will never go political on these. Not what we're about. Uh, so John says, I've got a gig coming up, but I've got no DJ booth available. I need ideas for a cheap makeshift table. Go to your local decorating supplier, get the most sturdy wallpaper pasting table that you can, and then go to your local home shop uh, and buy a black sheet, black bed sheet, not a fitted one with the, plastic, with the um, elastic around the corners, just a flat black bed sheet. Put your decorating table down, make sure you lock everything open, put the bed sheet over it, put your gear on top. Works fine unless you're using record decks, in which case what I just recommended is a horrible solution because these need a much more stable table. But for your controller and stuff, then that's going to work just fine. Um, so have a go at that if you want the cheapest way of going about this. Uh, it's got me out of many a scrape. Or you're even, even cheaper, take your ironing board from home. But I wouldn't really recommend that. That does look a bit, does look a bit rough. Um, so I'm a DJ producer and I listen back through everything. Speakers, cans, Sonos, car. Yes, everyone does. Another thing I didn't tell you actually is that these um, speakers here and also the IK Multimedia box that I was talking to you about that's on our news page, this one here, can also emulate speakers. So when you've got it plugged in, it's quite clever. You can tell it to uh, play back your sound like someone was listening to it on a flat screen TV or on their phone or in the car or on small speakers or on like a Bluetooth speaker. So it's quite nice because you can sit there as a producer or as a DJ making a DJ mix and say, what would this sound like in the car? What would this sound like on a phone without having to put it on your phone and listen? So it's quite clever. So thank you for, uh, for that. Thank you for reminding me uh, about that. Uh, so is the Pioneer, Pioneer Flex 4 any good, bro? That wasn't addressed to me, but I'm here, so I'll answer it. It's actually here somewhere. Here's the Flex 4. This is the perfect starter controller. This will give you everything you need to get going. What I like about the Flex 4 is that it's serious enough to have most of the functions that you need to learn to DJ, but it also is flexible. Flex is in the name. It works with Serato, works with Rekordbox, works with Algorithms DJ. You can plug it into your laptop. You can also plug it into your phone or your tablet. So there's lots of ways of using it. Now, it's not the only two, three, 300, I think, dollar controller out there. There's actually loads of them. Uh, honestly, my advice when we're teaching people in the school is just get anything, get anything. Don't spend more than $300, get anything. Because when you're learning to DJ, you don't know what you want in the future. You don't know which direction you want to take it in. You don't know if you want to get a standalone controller like this. It doesn't need a laptop or you want to get a bigger version of what I just held up. that has got all the features, but still needs a laptop. You don't even know if you want to save up and buy something like this. You just don't know. Uh, you might decide that actually it was all about record decks all along for you and you needed to get record decks and a DVS system. If you've only spent 300 on a little controller to learn on, you haven't lost very much when it's time to sell it and then buy something bigger or keep it and use it as your backup. Or I don't, I'm not into DJing. I was a mistake. Well, you spent 300, not 3000. So always recommend you start with a small controller. The Flex 4 is a good one. It's not the only one out there. The little Newmark mix tracks are good as well. But honestly, they all do the same thing at that kind of price point. They all don't have the same stuff like lots of pro inputs and outputs and four channels and onboard effects and all that. That's what you pay when you spend four figures, not three figures, right? So they're all much of a muchness. They're a, they're a little hollow plastic box that controls the software on your computer, right? So any of them will do. But yeah, the Flex 4 is absolutely fine. Uh, Pepe, hello everyone. What about the winners of all that gear from last month? Uh, are they enjoying it? Yes, we get lovely emails from the people who win our um, who win our um, uh, census uh, every year. We do a for those of you that don't know, we do a uh, a survey every year. And fifteen thousand students took it this year. Well, students and uh, and uh, readers and viewers and subscribers to our site. Uh, and you can actually see the results. They just went live on the Digital DJ Tips website. So head there, click to latest, and then you'll see in the 
The latest uh, posts, one of them is this one here. Here are the results from our 2024 census, the biggest DJ survey in the world. Uh, and it's great. It tells you all about you lot, uh, where you're from, how old you are, what music you play, what gear you use. Uh, it's really quite a good insight into the audience here at Digital DJ Tips. So go take a look at it when you've got a second. I'm sure you'll find it fun. Uh, thank you for, again for reminding me to tell you about that. So Lou says, does Audacity do the same thing as mixed in key and platinum notes? And if yes, what's the effect for that? Thank you. Right, Audacity is a free piece of software you can download, A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y, Audacity, that you can download that will allow you to do anything with audio. So you can load any audio you want. It could be your DJ mix, could be a track that you've that you've got, that you've finished, that you want to do something with, uh, and it'll basically let you do something with that audio. So I'm just trying to find a um, piece of audio to show you what Audacity looks like now on the, on the laptop, and when I have, I will uh, show you Audacity. So yes, it can kind of do some of the things that other audio processing software can do. So for instance, the, uh, the normalizing, which is making a track as loud as possible without it distorting, you can do that in Audacity, absolutely fine. Um, you can do things like applying EQ, editing the audio, taking the, 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 the silence off the beginning and end of files. You can even edit whole DJ mixes to get rid of the bits that you don't like. Um, so yes, it's pretty cool what Audacity can do. Um, it can, so it can do some of what, what you were talking about. This is Audacity. So I've loaded up a piece of music here. So I can highlight bits, I can change bits, I can trim the beginning, I can trim the end, I can highlight the whole thing and go into the effects and do things like normalize. So here's a volume, I can make it as loud as possible by clicking that one there uh, without it actually distorting. So trying to make it louder now, but it's actually already been normalized. So nothing changed there, uh, but I could make it quieter for instance. So go to the volume control uh, and um, let's, let's, let's reverse that and make it quieter. Let's get it down to a little bit lower. There you go. See, so it's quieter now. Uh, so this also lets you do things like extract the stems now. I, th I think the Windows version lets you extract the stems. And there's all kinds of other things on here that you can do with it. So you can see we've got noise removal. You can tidy up, attempt to tidy up digital distortion on here and stuff, you can apply effects and uh, you can actually edit. So you can zoom right in using Audacity. And then once you get there, you can edit the audio when you, when you, uh, when you see problems with your mix, you can cut out bits that went wrong. Um, so I'm just trying to, I forgot what the shortcut was for zooming in. It is that there. There we go. So look, I'm zooming right into a waveform view there uh, and then back again to normal, you zoom out of course. And so the idea here is that you've got the ability to dive into any piece of audio and do what you want with it. It will therefore let you manually do what some of these processing programs like Platinum Notes do automatically. Platinum Notes will take a piece of audio, try and correct distortion and clip, clicked, peak, clipped peaks, will try and make it as loud as possible, will even correct problems with pitch and so on. You can do most of those things inside these kind of programs, but they're all manual. Uh, but Audacity is definitely worth having. I use it for editing mixtapes. So the way we teach mixtapes here at Digital DJ Tips, the way we teach you to do your DJ mixes is when you make a mistake, don't go back to the beginning, just go back to that transition and do that transition again. You mess it up again, go back and do it again. And then at the end, load the audio into something like Audacity and cut out the mistakes. And you end up with a mix that you did, but that you've it's presenting the best of you right so um that's what our that's what our um mixtape course teaches uh, and that's what we use we use audacity for it it's just one of those pieces of software it's definitely worth having so thanks for the audacity question uh let's do one or two more then uh this <laughs> oh i love you guys this is some dj chip c by the way sorry mate can't help you phil i'm going mad I bought an entire club sound system, 16 mains, four sub boxes, 30k watts, and a rack of processors, also DMX lights. It cost me not much more than my Flex 10. Any advice on setup? Take the money you saved on buying that lot and pay an audio engineer to come and set it up for you. That is my advice for you. Well done, my friend. Enjoy your huge setup that you've now got. Um, hey, Phil, I want your personal take, says Cartel. Which do you think is the best software in 2024? Serato Virtual DJ, uh, Serato or Virtual DJ? Uh, it depends what you want it for, frankly. Uh, so I can't answer that because I don't know what you want it for. If you want to scratch, if you want to play hip hop, if you want to DJ, 
uh, with turntables, Serato. If you want to DJ with video, karaoke, mobile, virtual DJ. Anything else? We could have a debate because they're both pretty good at everything else. Uh, right, one or two more. Uh, Mini Rig 4 is out now. This is Mini Rig 3. Fantastic little speaker. Uh, have you tried it yet? No, but they have promised they're going to send us one for, uh, for review. Uh, is there still no latency on Mini Rig speakers? There is definitely no latency. They're all DJs over there. So this is the Mini Rig speaker. It's a tiny little speaker that uh, has got some things on it that make it unique. So it's got the ability to use wires to plug in other mini rig speakers. So there's no delay there because you can wire them all together, which is awesome because it's also Bluetooth. And it's also got um, uh, a subwoofer that you can get to work with it as well. Now, I don't know where our subwoofer has gone, actually. I'm looking behind me now for it, but no, I can't see it. So you can get one of these, another one of these, and a subwoofer, wire them all together, wire your DJ gear in, and now you've got portable speakers that are also Bluetooth if you just want to have fun with them. But at the same time, uh, they are zero latency when you wire. And that's unusual nowadays. Most Bluetooth battery speakers nowadays, even if you plug a wire into them from your DJ gear, have got the dreaded latency. Latency being the delay between what you do in your DJ gear and what you hear, which is a non-starter. It's why Sonos is a non-starter as well. So yeah, they promised they'll send us one, but I can tell you now that it won't have any latency on that input because that's what they're all about. Uh, right, I've got to go, people. Thank you for asking your questions today. Uh, I will be back next Tuesday with another one of our live tutorials. Uh, and do join me then, 4 p.m. London, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern. Do remember that we've got a special moment where you can get for just the next day or two uh, the James Hype courses that we sell. Head to the Digital DJ Tips website, click the flash at the top uh, and they will both come up and then you can dive in and see what we've got for you. But uh, in a nutshell, you can learn all of James's classic DJ mixes from James himself and also you can learn how to make club bangers. And let's face it, if anyone knows how to make club bangers, it's Mr. James Hype, again, taught by the man himself. With me there as well, saying, how did you do that? How did you do that, James? James, slow down for God's sake. We need to understand this. Tell me again. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm there being the, the dumb student in the room, uh, asking all the questions uh, that you probably don't need me to, but sometimes you will. Uh, and uh, yeah, we loved, we loved making those courses for James. Uh, it's a good mixture of us and him and all the better for it, I'd say. So go check them out. They're both $100 off. You could save $200 today if you bought them both in this flash sale. Uh, right, I'm out of here. Thank you. Get good. Get out there. Make the moments. Can't wait to see you again for another one of these very soon. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, bye-bye.